Hello everyone, so welcome back. Um, today uh, we are going to uh, have a, a second day to talk about classification model. So uh, just a very brief review with you guys. Um, last time we did a logistic model to do a classification for two um, classes. Um, so the logistic model basically is a model we use uh, at the logistic functions to model the uh, arts of two events happen. Um, it's uh, a very different approach to the linear regression model. Again, we are not trying to fit the line to the data point, but we are trying to project um, our uh, probability that some event could possibly happen than um, the other class. So today we are going to use a different uh, classification model to do the same task. Um, so first, um, let's uh, look at the linear discriminant analysis, and then we will move on to the quadratic uh, discriminant an analysis. So to use the linear um, discriminant analysis that we learned in the class, we have to use um, this MASS library. Well, the way how the syntax work uh, in the LDA model, it's pretty similar to the logistic models or the linear regression model. We only need to um, call the functions from uh, MASS library. So LDA, it stands for uh, linear discriminant analysis. And what we need to do is to pass in the response variable and then the wiggly lines, and then what you need to pass in is the predictors. So those are the two predictors that we used previously. And um, you have to call the data, which data set you're going to use, S market. And uh, in this case, we are also passing in this parameter here to tell um, the models we're only using a subset of our data. And the subset is um, basically the year uh, before 2005. So except the year of 2005 in our data sets, um, everything will be used to train this model. We save this into the data fit, and let's take a look of the fit. Well, as you can see, uh, this is the output for the fit. Uh, you don't see uh, any um, kind of like a p-values. You don't see any um, R-square, adjusted R-square, F-statistics, um, AIC, BIC. So the reason is because um, the linear discriminants analysis um, basically just um, trying to find out the distance of the two classes, um, how different they are. We are trying to find the mean values um, uh, of the two and trying to use the variance information to figure out well where will be the boundary, which will be the point or the line that help us to classify uh, the two classes or maybe multiple classes. So in this case, um, as you can see, you will only see this uh, uh, coefficients will turn back uh, to you, which is um, the coefficients that um, relates to that linear uh, lines um, for basically um, classifying um, the two classes, either up or down. All right, so um, in the case of uh, uh, the LDA, you can simply just plot um, the LDA models fits here, and you will see there are two distributions here. One is for the class of going down. One is for the uh, other class in our data set, which is going up. And um, as you can see, well, uh, you now have a better understanding after the class to um, uh, interpret uh, this uh, distribution here, because we are trying to find the difference of the means of the two um, and knowing, knowing about the uh, distributions uh, of the two classes so that we can find that um, uh, point to identify whether they belong to one class or the other. And now, well, um, of course, the very important task for us is to find out how well it can predict the unseen models, I mean the unseen data sets. So we are going to um, uh, basically save this subset of data sets uh, from S market, which is the year of 2005 data, into this uh, variable. Smart, uh, the S market dot 2005, and we would like to use the predict functions right here, and trying to use our LDA model fits to predict the results by using the unseen data in the training sets. Right, so the training is not including 2005, but now we are using the 2005 uh, numbers to try to use the model to predict the results. So we'll save it to the predictions. Now let's see what the first five returns to be. So the first five right here returns the results of ups. So that means, well, the first five rows of the data in 2005 actually suggest uh, the markets will be going up. Well, if we want to actually uh, um, uh, see the um, predictions um, 
in a more general sense, you can use um, uh, the class of this uh, uh, predictions. As you can see, there is a list of things uh, within these predictions. So you want to know what are the things in there. Um, in general, I can tell you there are three things are going to be um, uh, um, uh, reported in this predictions result. One is the class of the predictions, and then the other one would be the posterior probability of the ups or the downs. And the third thing will be returned as the, um, the uh, uh, predictions results of the models. So if I'm going to uh, show you in a more structural way, I can use uh, this data frame functions. I'm trying to put the result into a data frame. And in this case, we only uh, put it in uh, the last five of the observations here. You can actually put the whole thing in the da uh, data frame, obviously. So here, as you can see, um, those are our uh, results returns. So we have the first column, the class, which is the actual predictions uh, from our model. And uh, the second column right here, it's basically the posterior uh, probability for going down. And the uh, third row right here is the posterior, posterior uh, probability for going up. And the last one right here is basically uh, the accuracy results there uh, for the uh, models. All right, so um, if we want to actually uh, compare those um, accuracies, uh, of course, we have to use uh, what we call the confusion matrix. You can simply use the table uh, functions right here and put in two things. Number one, uh, your predictions from your model, and we call this the class right, in your predictions. And the second thing you want to pass in is the actual data from your data set, which is the actual up and downs in the year of 2005. On this. So as you can see, well, you actually have a very nice uh, confusion matrix right here that tells you well, 35 of the category in downs in your data sets can be accurately predicted, but 76 of them are incorrect. And in your actual data sets, well, there are uh, 106 of them can be accurately predicted by the models because it's also up in the model, but uh, 35 of them are incorrect. And also, well, what you can do is to get a accuracy rate uh, by putting a mean functions here to trying to get the means of the results comparing the uh, predictions results to a actual data results. So this is the overall. So in this case, we set the equal sign right here. If um, the actual uh, the predictions in your models using the uh, testing data set 2005 data sets, if you're up and the actual data sets for that position, also it's up, then it will equals to 1. If they're not equals to each other, let's say, well, the prediction sets no, uh, or maybe going up, but the actual data sets sets, well, it's actually going down, well, then it will throw a 0. So the mean of all of this will give you an idea, and in this case, well, the number here reports the models, the LDA model can actually... Uh, have a 55.95% accuracy rate to predict the testing data. Well, in the class, we also went over the concept of uh, quadratic uh, discriminant analysis. So we are going to use this um, QDA model also to try to uh, do the same thing so that we can compare result later. So in this case, well, the QDA model is pretty similar to the LDA. You call out the function from the MASS uh, library. You pass in the response variable, and then you pass in the predictors. And then you call out the data sets. And if you want to um, actually use just a subset of it, uh, you can actually put a subset parameter here. And you save it. And let's see what it returns to this bit. So again, well, this. Um, uh, fitting output right here does not give you any p-values, f-statistics, r-square, or AIC, BIC. Um, again, the reason is because, well, the model is only used to find that um, uh, boundaries uh, to give a good classification of two groups of data or two groups of classes. <clears throat> So in this case, well, it only returns um, this uh, parameter back to you, and those are not the coefficients that you've seen in the linear model because, well, this QD, uh, QDA classifiers 
involved with the quadratic form rather than the linear uh, functions of the predictors. So that's why um, those are uh, not actually the per, uh, parameter that you use um, for drawing a line or maybe drawing a, a quadratic lines. But it's just a parameter that we uh, uh, use uh, for our predictions. All right, so in order to plot the functions, um, we are going to uh, use a new library here called the KLAR library. So uh, if you have already installed to your machine, you can basically just call it. And what we need to do is to pass in um, this uh, response variable, the corresponding variable, uh, the predictors, call the data sets, and trying to pass in the methods here using uh, QDA. So uh, let's say, well, we are going to use this function right here, part uh, t minus, right, part t minus. So this will give you this very nice uh, partition plot um, to kind of showing you how um, well the quadratic um, uh, discriminant analysis uh, uh, help classify uh, the two uh, classes, the up and downs. Well, before, um, uh, we're using this, um, just want to uh, mention um, uh, in our previous uh, uh, notes, uh, we actually have the plot functions for the QDA.fit. Uh, unfortunately, this function is no longer available um, to use for the latest versions of R. So it's um, a very old uh, uh, versions of R that could support it. So that's why we are not using that. Instead, we are, we are using the, the actual uh, new library to do it. All right, so let's say, well, we want to actually use our subset of data, let's say 2005 data, to put it into our model and try to run the predictions. Well, let's see what the first five observations returns. Again, well, they're all up, 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 up. Right. Um, if you want to just print the predictions here without uh, knowing uh, what's in there, that's okay too, but I can show you. It looks really ugly. Uh, because it will throw you, um, first of all, uh, the class of the predictions, and then well, it will show you the posterior uh, probability for each class right here. So it looks pretty ugly. Um, and just like previous uh, Lee does, um, if you want to make things uh, pretty, you might not want to just print the predictions. Um, instead, you want to actually um, put it into a data frame like this which make it uh, much more uh, intuitive to read. And now, well, let's uh, try to do the confusion matrix. Again, the same thing. Well, as you can see, well, um, the QDA model can actually improve the prediction, uh, actually we, uh, 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 decrease the accuracy uh, for the class of down, because now we only have 30 of them are correctly predicted by the model and 81 of them are incorrect for the actual down uh, data in our uh, class. But it actually improved the accuracy for the up, because well now we only left with 20 of them's predictions are incorrectly predict the actual data, but uh, we have 121. So let's take a look at the overall. Right? So we can use the mean value uh, functions to do the overall fit of the model. And it suggests that well this QDA model can predict 59.92% uh, of the results uh, from our testing data sets. So which is an improvement, because uh, if we compare it previously, we only have an accuracy rate of um, here, 55.9. And now we have a four points, a total of 4% accuracy improvement from the QDA model which is very impressive. Now, the last thing that we want to do today is to compare um, uh, a different classifier here that we call the, uh, uh, we are going to bring it back uh, from our old uh, date uh, in chapter one, so the KNN model. So um, using the uh, K nearest, mo uh, nearest uh, neighbor model, we can also classify uh, two uh, classes like this. So the first thing we want to call out here is to use the library class. And if you want to know more about the KNN, of course, you can ask um, R to tell you this. Let's attach the data sets. And we're going to create uh, uh, the X uh, variable here uh, for our predictions. 
So we are using a CBind function to combine the lag one and lag two uh, data. We're going to define the trains uh, 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 definitions here, which is the year less than 2005. And again, well, very similarly, we are going to pass in the KNN functions uh, here. And uh, within the functions, uh, we're going to have the uh, X uh, training, which is uh, the year um, uh, less than 2005, right? So anything beyond, uh, below 2005. And we would like to um, basically test it with, uh, so again, the first thing you pass in is what you are going to pass in to train. And the second thing that you pass in this element here is what you want to test, So uh, which is the data set in 2005 only. So this training set here is anything um, that before 2005. This is uh, the unseen, anything that's not um, uh, 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 below 2005. And then we are going to use the directions uh, in our data sets for training. And then we will define uh, the K parameter here, which is one. So we only use the nearest one. And uh, we are going to use the parameters here, probability and proof false. So let's run this. And once you did the models, you can now actually do the confusion matrix. Ooh, it seems like, well, it's doing uh, better on the down classes, right? Class right here. So uh, comparing to the QDA and uh, LDA. But uh, unfortunately, for the up class right here, it did uh, terribly bad. And also, uh, we can actually uh, use uh, the uh, mean functions to find out how well it actually uh, make our predictions. And in this case, the KN only give us 8.5 accuracy uh, to test on the testing data sets uh, from the models. So, well, overall, I think uh, we have a very good um, um, understanding now how to do stuff on R, but um, don't forget um, uh, which model to be used and how we use it and how we tell one is better than the other one. It's mainly based on your domain knowledge. Uh, whether you know well the type 1 error it's more uh, important or type 2 error it's more important uh, to eliminate um, and also it really depends on your um, uh, your practice um, on how to evaluate the model, model accuracy by using the uh, confusion matrix and also the um, the mean square error terms or the accuracy rates um, that we uh, calculate uh, in this exercise so um, in this uh, uh, exercise, hopefully you enjoy uh, learning about this classification model. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, for now, we are going to um, say uh, we know something about classif classification model now. Um, and next time, what we're going to do is to um, study a little bit more about um, the cross-validation uh, methods um, to uh, get to know more about our uh, models. All right, so I will see you guys next time. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video.